So they took it worldwide, and I ended up doing 27 commercials as that character over a three-year period. So that I bought my first house in my, in my 20s, and I was like, wow, how did that happen? So, um, uh, so I got, kind of got hooked in the, and that, that campaign is the one that marked me as tall, skinny, goofy guy who moves well and wears a lot of crap on his face without complaining about it. <laughs> And to the creature effects makeup people, that's the big one. Because uh, most actors are divas, but not. Let's be, can we be honest? Okay, you have met some of the conventions and things. <laughs> We're so full of ourselves. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. But um, and, and, and so you try to put, put an actor through discomfort and extra heat, extra weight, and they're going to be like, get yeah, Does it have to be so heavy and hot? Get it off of me. Uh, that's what they normally hear. So the, here I was like, you know, I said yes to playing a creature with like heavy makeup and a five hour application. I said yes to it, right? So I'm just gonna do my job. Well, the makeup people were like, what? you're not complaining, what? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah, I said, but, and that's growing up in the Midwest. See, we're Brooklyn people, right? You know, so, yeah, that's right, that's right. So, uh, so the Max and I campaign is one that, that actually got my name out through in, into the creature effects makeup community. Those are the people that then would refer me for the next job, and the next job, and the next job. Because um, I was told that being as tall as I'm six three and a half, I weigh 140 pounds. That is a skinny, skinny boy. Uh, and so, uh, to, with the movement background to make these creatures come to life, and to, to be a skinny palette like this, they can build on me without getting too bulky. My face is kind of small too, so they can they, I, they can build and hollow out things and. Uh, so the creature effects makeup people keep telling me that, that, that this is a good palette to work from. Okay, so that's uh, that, that's uh, how that uh, came about. So my name would get referred to anytime there was a tall, skinny alien or a, you know some man, animal, mutant thing. I was I was a kangaroo man twice. <laughs> Who can say that? <laughs> anybody know what movies? Anybody? Anybody? Oh yeah. yes. Tank girl. Tank girl was one of them. Anybody else? The other one's a, it's a, it's a, a tough one. The other one was Warriors of Virtue. Anybody? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, it's sort of like the Ninja Turtles, only we were like like more fantasy driven and more, uh, ooh, we're going to teach virtues while we kick ass. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was ye. Uh, and that would be, I would, my element of nature was metal. And I had those metal oh, rings. Yeah. And I spoke with like sign language. That I made it myself, by the way. <laughs> I did, I did. That was some dialogue. <laughs> uh, so anyway, but, um, but uh, so I, I, I kept doing commercials all along the way and then started doing movies. Uh, one, of my, one of my first big studio movie, though, was not really a creature makeup thing. It was, um, uh, it was because of the contortionist thing. Oh, get this. Okay, so get this. Uh, a friend of mine, Bob Yerkes, stunt legend in Hollywood. Uh, he's helping the stunt, the, the, uh, the stunt department on Batman Returns, right? And uh, so one day, I got a phone call from the stunt coordinator of Batman Returns at home. Hello. Hey, Doug, this is Silver. I'm here with the stunt coordinator of Batman Returns. <laughs> yeah, yes. But, and uh, he said, well, I got your name from Bob Yerkes, and you said that you're a contortionist, so you want to come in and meet us? Yes. So uh, I go to Warner Brothers that same day, and um, and I, I had no idea. I hadn't seen a, a script. I didn't know what the storyline of the Batman Returns was going to be. And uh, so uh, so he, he tells me there was kind of a circus theme to the show. The Penguin, played by Danny DeVito, hangs out with the Red Triangle Circus Gang, right? Okay. So there's going to so they just figured. My friend gave them my name because if there's a sight gag for a contortionist in the circus gang somewhere, Doug's your guy for that. Okay, so I thought I was just there for like a one or two day sight gag. Right. So I go and I come into the stunt creator's office. He's like, "Okay, well, show me what you can do." So I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I want to, want to, want to." And so it was like, "Whoa, okay." Um, Hang on, I'm gonna go get somebody and I want you to do that for him too. So he walks out of the room and comes back in with Tim Farking Burton. <laughs> so I'm like, I wet myself. And, and, oh, hi, hi. and he's like, so uh, don't, don't just show Tim what you just did for me. <laughs> so Tim was like, huh, okay. Well, we're going to go in the next room and talk about you. Just hang on a second. 
<laughs> so I'm sitting there by myself, like, I was so, I thought the most nervous two minutes of my life. They come back in the room and Tim Burton says, well, you got the part. The part? There's a part? Yeah, he said, yeah so apparently there was a scripted role for Thin Clown uh, in the Red Triangle Circus Gang, and uh, was my partner uh, in crime was the Fat Clown. We, looked, we made a perfect 10 together, get it? <laughs> it's an old joke. Uh, <laughs> but, um, so I ended up working on the movie for 14 weeks. Um, just hanging out with the Red Triangle Circus Gang and being a, a sidekick to Danny DeVito. It was a dreamy job for me. It really, really great. I had no responsibility, no pressure. I could just hang out and be on film. <laughs> that about six scenes. Um, shortly after that, then came uh, Hocus Pocus. Anybody? <laughs> well, now that I have the Batman Returns credit on my resume, that's what got me in the door to be seen for Hocus Pocus. So I auditioned for Kenny Ortega, the director to be the, be the goofy zombie Billy Butcherson. And um, I just fell in love with that character so much. That's before zombies were cool, by the way. Okay, okay. That was the first. <laughs> but, Billy, but what was so fun about him was it was a, it was a Disney kids, family-friendly movie with a zombie. So I was goofy and floppy and, and actually kind of good looking. Can I be honest about yeah. that? Yeah, you know, I, I can't tell you, some of you might be in the room. Uh, I, I've been told by many, a, a 20-something girl, that I was their first screen crush. Yeah. Right, right, have you heard that? Can, can you, look, you yeah, you're right there, right there, we got one right there. Which makes you a necrophilia, by the way. We did that work, okay, okay, bring it. Bring all the dead people. Uh, so, but, uh, but they, they did that on purpose. They kind of, they kind of fashioned me to look like, sort of like, you know, a retro rock star from, you know, from 300 years ago. Uh, so great time. Working with that mother, great fun. Sarah Jessica Parker was delightful. Kathy and Jimmy, hilarious. And all the kids. We had our, our 20th uh, year anniversary last, last fall. Uh, and seeing the kids growing up in their 30s now was like, <laughs> it's, it's jarring. But um, yeah, so then from there, that was, that was the early 90s. And then, oh gosh, all their stuff happened. I kept working consistently, kind of under the radar. I was never like a celebrity. And then, uh, uh, 1997 rolls around, and um, 97, yes. And I, I got a phone call from one of those Creature Effects people saying, Hey, are you free to do a night shoot uh, tonight downtown LA? And like, I'm free, yes, let's do it. Uh, so I, I go down to uh, Los Angeles downtown, and I'm standing on top of a, a rooftop of a building, looking over the edge, rain machine hitting me in the face with a, a rubber mask on. I was kind of like a bug. A, a giant insect that was sort of human looking for a movie called Mimic. Anybody Mimic? <laughs> right. So, uh, uh, so uh, yes, yeah, so I ended up working for three days on Mimic. On day two, I'm sitting at the, uh, at the lunch table, and right across the table sits down a rotund, jolly man uh, who happened to be the director of the film. And he says to me, So, tell me everything you've been in before. That was Guillermo del Toro. Okay. Right, and it was his first American studio feature film. Uh, he'd done, had, of course, a big, huge career in Mexico. And with his Spanish language, uh, uh, he'd done Kronos by that time. He had done a lot of television, a lot of commercials, a lot of, a lot of creature making effects in himself. So we had that conversation. He told me his background, that he made monsters when he started off in the, in the show biz. And he wanted to hear about, like, all the monsters that I've played, and who did the makeup, and what were they like as a person. So we had this great monster, creepy, crawly talk going back and forth. And I was like, oh my gosh, who is this guy? He's great, right? Uh, he's like an eight-year-old fanboy tucked into this big man's body that directs movies. You know, he's, he's amazing. Uh, so at the end of our conversation, he said, so do you have a card on you? So I happened to have these business cards with my face drawn on them. That was, it was me, like the side shot. I did myself, the drawing. <laughs> and my phone number was somewhere around the mouth. Like, <laughs> so, uh, uh, well, that's my card. He goes, oh, that's great. And he put it in his wallet, right? And then, I, uh, so that job ended. I went off and did other stuff. In the meantime, I did an episode of Buffy the Vampire. There it is. Yeah, the Hush episode. I played the leader of the gentlemen, the silent guys that tore hearts out and did it, did it with all politeness. Yeah, they were very genteel. Oh, we only had to collect seven of them, or five of them. What was it, five? I can, who knows? Who knows the more? I don't remember. Uh, was it five? It was seven. Was it seven? <laughs> we, only got, we only got to get, yeah, we didn't get all seven. Yeah, yeah, I did. Whew, I'm glad someone knows. 
Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, it was on CNN and then to, in 2000, we were doing more job. I was sucking under the radar for a while, but uh, no, nobody had it. 2002 rolls around. It's the fall of 02. I got another phone call about, hey, Doug, I got a director here who says he's no one who works with you. And, uh, and we're doing a movie, so there's a character for you if you want to meet with us tomorrow. Yeah, sure, I'm happy to. What had happened earlier that day was that the creature effects makeup people had done a maquette. Now, a maquette, of course, is a scaled down version of what a character is going to look like. It's a sculpture, so you get a 3D design of what a character is supposed to look like. That sculpture had just been completed. They invited the director of this movie to come in and have a look and approval of this character. The character was Abe Sapien from the Hellboy first television. <laughs> and the director, Guillermo del Toro, came walking into the room to give this final approval. They unveil this sculpture, and legend has it. Okay, and it's been confirmed that it's not just legend, it actually happened. He came into the room and was like, oh, fell to his knees, and said, I am so fat. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, but I think that means what a beautiful thin creature. <laughs> I think that's what he meant. Um, so, so the guy, the sculpture, the sculptor, uh, 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 Jose Ismael. Um, uh, that's not his name. Oh shoot. Anyway, uh, uh, Michael Lozaldi, then the head of the Special Motion Creature Shop, and. Uh, Steve Wang, who designed the creature, um, Jose Fernandez, that's his name, sculptor. The three of them had all worked with me before, and uh, they all kind of chimed in and said, well, you know who the perfect person to play this character is Doug Jones. Guillermo del Toro said, Doug Jones? I know Doug Jones. Pulled my car out of his wallet that I'd given him five years. Wow. Right? That's awesome. Carry a business card. And never change your phone number. And never change your phone number. Exactly. Which I have not. I've never changed it. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So that's what became. That's how Hellboy started for me. Uh, I got to play the blue fish guy. Love him, love him, love him with all my heart. And um, of course, uh, uh, that, then, I, then I became a little speck on the radar. And people wanted to find out who's the blue guy in that movie. And then they could tie that together. Oh, he was in Hocus Pocus. Oh, he was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, he was in Warriors of Virtue. <laughs> so, uh, then I, I kind of. Disappeared again for a while and under more heavy makeups. I did. Uh, anyone see a movie called Doom? Doom? <laughs> what do you think of that? No, don't tell them. Do you like it? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I played all of the, I played all the imp creatures in that, all the imps that are. And that means I died five times in that movie. <laughs> so if you hate me after today, just watch Doom and you'll get all your jobs. I'm not dying again. <laughs> So, uh, so, uh, oh, okay, so then, so then, okay, anyone see a movie called Bench Warmers? The Bench Warmers? Right, yes, yes, right? That was a funny flick, yeah. Uh, you got your Rob Schneider, you got your David Spade, you got your John Heater, and they're all, they're a bunch of adults that are kind of losers and want to go back and recapture their, their little league days that they never got as kids. So John Lovitz is this eccentric billionaire who finances them with their own little, their own little league. Uh, well, I happened to be John Lovitz's butler in the movie, and his butler happened to be a robot. So I was in this big, I, I was on wheels too, I was driven around by a remote control. Oh gosh, it was hard. Uh, but uh, it was my voice you heard as well. Lunch was all the way, Mr. Carmichael. Uh, so anyway, I, uh, oh, there was love. So, um, okay, so after the Warners, guess what I did? Okay, okay, shh, So I got an email from my favorite director, Guillermo del Toro. And he says, Dog, uh, I'm over in Spain. Well, he types that way in emails. <laughs> I'm in Spain right now, prepping a movie, and I want you to be the, the title character. Oh, oh wow. So uh, what he sent me then was the script for Pan's freaking Labyrinth. Okay. Right? Right? <laughs> what I said. <laughs> so uh, uh, I read the script. Uh, wiped a tear away as I turned the last page and, oh my gosh, it's the most beautiful thing I have ever read in my life. So I sent him an email back uh, later that night and said, yes, 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 thank you so much for thinking of me. I love you, I love you, I love you. It's in Spanish. 
Then I told him, I can't do it. I know the thing. There's no way I don't speak Spanish. And blah, 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 blah. So he said, ah, don't worry. You can count to 10 for all I care. And we'll dub over it later. <laughs> well, I couldn't give him that. So I, I couldn't leave him with my mouth going, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> I couldn't do it. So I, uh, I learned the Spanish and of, the, of the film. I learned all the dialogue. And the, I, I had a translation of English and Spanish in front of me so I could break down the sentence structure and figure it out for myself. <coughs> and, uh, so we, it, it all worked out the end. And Pan's Labyrinth was just that. That was the movie that um, that people stopped calling. They didn't know what to call me in the press. It was like, well, Doug Jones, Stuntman, Slash, uh, oh, 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 thank you, you're very kind. You heard me coughing, didn't you? <laughs> I, I choke on my own spittle. <laughs> Get to hear this up close. Joan Rivers, right? Well, okay, 
this work. So, so, I just talked with Martin McGrath from Extra. Nice to meet you. Great fun. Yay. Ho, ho, ho. Da, 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 da. Publicist John says, uh, da, John will talk to you now. Like, <gasps> there was John Rivers. It was about to happen, right? So, so, uh, so, so they were at a commercial break. It was an out of live television. They were at a commercial break. And, uh, and so, so Joan was like, yeah, it was good to get here early. It's good. I can talk to you. This is good. And they're getting, she had some cue cards they had given her about every movie that was nominated. So she had her Pants Labyrinth cards out in front of her. My name was on there. So she said, and so she said to me, thank goodness the cameras were not rolling on her. She said, how do you pronounce that? And I said, oh, well, that's uh, Labyrinth. <laughs> Labyrinth. <laughs> and she goes, oh, did you know that before the movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? So then anyway, so the count okay, so we're back. We're back in the commercial break and live television beaming around the world. Okay. And uh, she's like, so we have Doug Jones in her pants laughing, and she was talking about like the little, you know, the, the what an artistic movie of the year this was, da 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 da. And you know, so I answer all the questions about like what makes it such a great film, and why is it so, ooh, 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 yeah. So all that down. And then she had an earpiece, and her producers from somewhere else were talking, feeding her questions. So you could see her eyes glaze over, like, <laughs> oh. So then she said, so then she said, okay, so uh, you wear a lot of makeup, and you know. I, do you ever have any uh, bad reactions, like allergies, and anything, all that much layers? So I said, um, oh no, uh, thankfully I have no allergic reactions or problems with, you know, latex, foam rubber, and adhesives, and removers, and silicone products. When I said the word silicone, I was looking at this face just full of it, right? <laughs> so I said, well you, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> When you say it, you're trying to like get the words back. What an ass! <laughs> I give all my life to talk to John Rivers, and I insult her. Anyway, so <laughs> Pan's Labyrinth was a great. Record. But she she took it very good humor. She said, "Oh, it's too late for me, honey." <laughs> so, so anyway, then the ride goes on from there, and we ended up uh, right after that. Um, uh, the Silver Surfer movie came out. Yes, a fantastic four sequel. <laughs> and that was the same creature effects shop, Spectral Motion, that did my makeup for the Hellboy movies. And uh, so they, they kind of referred me to the studio of uh, 20th Century Fox for um, to do the Silver Surfer part. So that was another another crazy, crazy role. Now I was wearing a full rubber.